Hi, I'm Ashmail12.com and in this part of my profile series tutorial I'm going to be creating the basic structure of the account page. So I'm not really doing any, any coding on updating the actual page and updating any actual user's details. Just basically getting the, the page laid out right and all the stuff in there that we need with echoing out current stuff from the database as well, like the first name, last name, um, and about me, I think. Um, right, so in Dreamweaver, I've basically created another page called account.php, and it's basically uh, what I actually did was I took this one, so index.php or profile.php if you're working with that way. Um, but if you're working with me, this is index.php. What I basically did was everything inside this div container. I deleted but I kept this menu div here inside the container so it looks like this and I also deleted this at the top here um, if it is not set get ID because that's only useful for the, the the profile page so that's basically what we get here and on the page it's just basically the menu just like that and the links should work okay so now onto the account page what we're first going to do is actually just go back to this index page um, and just add something onto this part here because I forgot to do this and basically what it is is just and and is set dollar underscore session Username. That just makes sure that um, the, the user has to be logged in as well for this to run because there's no point in running this header if there's nothing there. So basically, you'll just get question mark ID equals in the URL for no apparent reason. Um, so that just stops that there. So we can save that and that's just that. So move on to account page. First thing we need to do is under functions, it's basically just say if. Um, is not set so if it's not set dollar underscore session um, username so basically if no one's logged in then we don't want them to be able to access this page so we can just do a header location uh, back to the root uh, that's basically back to the root well not the root the uh, the current directory basically so it'll do that and then look for index.php so that'll basically go back to the home page so if you want to go back to say a login page you've got a specific page for login you just put in login.php in there um, but in essence that will go back to the index page of the current directory um, so basically if I just log out here and try to access account.php you see how we just get redirected straight back to the index page, which is this page here to log in. Okay, it's just a coincidence that the index page and the profile page are both the same in the way. The, the profile page is embedded in the index page, in which you don't have to do that, but that's just the way I've done it for this. Anyway, back onto the account page. Um, first thing we want to do now is actually get the user's data from the database. So underneath here, underneath the menu, if we create users data equals um, get users data, because that's where we created a um, a function, you know, in the one of the very early tutorials for getting users data, and we also need to put in there the get id. Um, because we don't have the ID currently available, we only have the oops, we only have the username that's stored in the session. It is better to put the ID in the session because then it's more unique. Unless you do something like only one username or some something like that. Usually, only one username is allowed anyway. But an ID is more if it's auto increment it's never going to be the same it can never be the same um, so that's why an ID is better that's why I've put get ID 
for the user's ID takes an ID, but we don't have the ID stored, if you know what I mean. Anyway, you I probably, suppose you know what I mean. Um, so now we're going to create some strong tags and underline. And this is just going to be basically saying update your name. And um, we're going to basically create a form here. Form action is going to come back to the account page, but we're going to put on here update equals name method uh, post slash form. Okay, so then we can put in first name um, is input type text. Um, the name would have as F name for first name um, and the value here we need to put in PHP echo users data um, first name okay so we'll basically just replicate this down the line and change this to last name then L name and last name so if we actually if I just do the submit button real quick here so input type is submit name equals name name submit um, and the value as um, update okay so if I refresh the account page we get something like that so update your name you can type in the new the new value clicks update and it will get updated not yet obviously but uh, it will do so what we can do now is we'll move on to the about me so it's basically the same principle we're just going to put a horizontal rule in there just to break the sections off um, so if we copy and paste this actual form down we can actually update um, about me. We could basically just change some of the stuff. So about me, we don't have to, you know, redo everything. For this, I'm not going to be using a input type. I'm just going to put a text area, um, text area name about me. Rows would have as five. Um, calls would have us dirty and before you say anything I did actually try that out so I've not just made them up randomly I did make them up randomly at first but uh, that's the uh, size I want it to be so you might want to play around with the size a bit forward slash text area oh, forward slash I'm going to put some PHP in here echo uses data so as you can see it's pretty much the same concept throughout about me um, I think we're good. Change that to about me submit, and if we refresh, we'll get something like that. Okay, so you know, basically, it's all the same. Now for the age, I'm actually not going to type all this out because it's quite a bit with the select button. So I'm just going to. Copy and paste something I created, and it's just as that. I've basically got, I've, you know, it's basically the same update age, change update here to age. I've got in these select boxes. I've only done from um, 1990 to 1997 just to save a bit of time as well. And there's, you know, there's not a lot of options, but you might want to do something like from 1900, say, to 2013. You know, you might want to do the, the full 100 years or something, but you know that's just something to think about and age submit there so if i refresh uh, we get something like that um now once we start coding um default values and stuff um i will try and get this update age to be so once you load the page it would automatically go to say say if someone was born on the 6th of august 1994 um, and they've got that stored in a database it will automatically be set to this because at the moment if you just refresh every time it's going to go back to the 1st of January 1990 or the 
your first year you've got basically. Um, so I will try and get that working and put that in the next tutorial if that's what I'm doing. Um, right, so the last thing is update the city and country. Once again, I am just going to copy and paste what I have because it's it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, update city country, change update, change this to country city, whatever. Um, you can put them in two separate forms if you want, but I've just merged them together since that they're they're related in a way. Um, name country, name city, country city submit and echoing out the details so basically that's what we get and that is basically the the layout that I have chosen to put for the account page um, now that's basically all I'm going to do in this video because that's just showing you how to set up the account page in a way that will work I suppose um, you could put, you could merge all these into one form and then have update at the bottom which collects all the data but say the user only wants to update um, the sitter, say they've moved to another sitter um, they can just do that and click update there and it's not having to read every single value and validate every single value even though it will be valid because you've not changed it you still have to go through that process. You can't just ignore validation if it's because it's not been changed. You still you still have to do it. It's just uh, it's just good practice to validate the data that's coming through. Um, so that's basically the layout of the account page, and I will be doing the actual updating code um, in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.